again, and welcome to another episode of Friends, Facts, and Fiction. As always, this podcast is made possible by our local convenience stores, the misappropriation of history, and you. And now to your hosts, Justin Hammonds, Brant Bramlett, and Drew Shellnut. What's up? What's happening, world? This is a podcast called Friends, Facts, and Fiction. Season five, trying to stay alive mm. and thrive. Season five, yeah, I did that double time. Anyway, um, <laughs> episode 18, the history of EMTs. Some funny stories will ensue. Um, anyway, I'm Justin Hammonds, looking at my boy Drew Show Nut. Hello. And my boy Grant Bramlett. Hey there. And just so happened to be our first emailed in listener request. Mm hmm. Grant's brother, Lee, is in the building. What's my catchphrase? Hey, hey, hey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there it sure. is. Yeah, there like it. Is. Yeah. He's, he's a former EMT, so, um, you know, he's on the episode. Um, last week, we covered uh, the Diamond episodes, and we forgot to bring in our great friend, John McNair. <laughs> we love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing our due diligence now to bring in experts when we... <laughs> Talk about things. And well, I mean, in all fairness, I we didn't know that he was going to talk about that. I didn't anyway, know he was going to talk about diamonds. Anyway, so. that was a surprise episode. This is a more planned episode, yep. and here we go up into these. Uh, wait, hold on, how y'all doing? <laughs> Everybody okay? I yeah. need to do a check in. Yeah, right? pretty good. Jesus, Dude. almost got scammed the other day. Oh, oh yeah, my company oh. did. Uh, Look at that, they uh, out yeah. here, bro. I know. Right. Twenty twenty yeah. still lives on. It was so scams funny too because. <laughs> um, there was that podcast that you turned me on to, Dan Cummins. Uh, yeah, Time Suck. Time Suck, yeah. Time Suck is phenomenal for, for you knowledge heads out there. Yeah, and he did a whole one on, um, like, the, uh, like, Nigerian prince style, like, email scams. Oh, yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, The Nigerian scams, And yeah. it was something I didn't even, well, it's not actually my fault. My my wife and office administrator was the one in doing, like, 95% of the correspondence with this guy. Yeah, yeah. And I never really paid attention to it. It was just her being like, he wants this. And I'm like, okay, cool. That'd be it, right? He wanted sod installed in his front yard of this house that he apparently had just bought. Mm-hmm. But he's, out of, he's out of town. No. He's out of town. <laughs> yeah, I, I was with him you to know? go see this house, by the way, he, <laughs> to, like, price it up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. And so he's out of town, and he wants the sod done before he gets back into town, oh, right? God. God. We go, we measure, I figure out how much it needs, we make up an estimate for the guy or whatever. I had no clue that she'd never actually spoken to him on the phone. I just assumed that she had, right? <laughs> and we send it off to him, and he very quickly texts back like that the estimate looks great, so, which means he gave us an email, and then he texted us in the email instead of replying in the email, which is kind of odd, but whatever. Yeah. People um, do weird shit all the time. Yeah, exactly. I didn't think that on much the of other it. other side, yeah. And... Uh, and then I start like getting a little closer to this project, and I'm like, man, this dude definitely language English is his second language, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then it gets down to it, right? I had ordered the sod. Oh shit! Which is not cheap. No, no. It's not. And the whole time he's like, this, you know, it, that fits in my budget. That's great, awesome. And I'm like, okay, cool. We need to add more money for me to come by and water it on a regular basis until you get into town. Mm-hmm. We're still good. Yeah. Then. He texts. Actually, I'll just pull this shit up because it's pretty funny. Because <laughs> now that I've already told you, I'm pretty sure it's a scam. And I'm going to show you the way this guy was texting. You're like, all right, Grant, I mean, come the fuck on. How did you not immediately pick this up? You know, I am to text you. Yeah, basically. I yeah. am to text you about <laughs> side <laughs> front yard. <laughs> so he says, perfect. I will instruct my assistant to provide you the tracking number so as to know when the check will arrive. And once the check clears, I will provide you the agent info. I'll keep you informed as soon as the tracking number has been provided. And I was like, well, that's kind of odd. That's, that's a but lot, bro. <laughs> he, he, he asked me and I gave him our PO box and he's going to mail us a check. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's kind of weird in my brain. But I said, okay, thank you. That sounds great. And then he said, okay, I will send you check for $5,450 for your own tips mm-hmm. and help me send $3,250 to the agent of the house because I haven't completed paying the commission fee of my house and other not to disturb you or stop you from working on the project. Oh, that's Yeah, nice. we're going to slide up out <laughs> there. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately call the guy. Yeah. No answer. Oh, very, very like bland, you know, like the Google voice number you've tried to reach is not available. You know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. So then I immediately text. I left a voicemail and then texted. Hey, hello, Mr. 
blank. I left you a voice <laughs> message just now. <laughs> We're not actually comfortable with that, unfortunately. I would only be able to accept payments for work that I provide, which is exclusively landscaping and lawn care. Mm-hmm. And then he very quickly texted me back, which means he purposefully didn't answer the phone. Of course, of course. I do like to bear me this favor. He doesn't have a facility to accept check. That's why I want you to help oh, me pay him. Shit, no. Once the money is in your account, I will send you his info so you can send the remained money to him. So then I called the sod company and said, hey, please cancel that order. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, before y'all do start cutting shit yeah, exactly. and rolling yeah. shit up. Um, and she was like, oh, oof. let me talk to my manager and then got back on the phone. I was like, uh, I think they've already put the order through. I'm so sorry. If that, uh, if that is the case, that we'll have already cut it. I can try and sell it for you. <laughs> and then uh, the manager called me back like maybe 30 minutes later. And he was like, I, I, I think I misunderstood what she was saying on the phone earlier. I went ahead and looked into it myself. We weren't going to start cutting that until the following morning from when I called them. Oh, right. So you guys are good. Oh, like, right. I already you put the called money. after the cutting of the day was done. Yeah, exactly. So he was like, uh, <clears throat> I already put the money back in your account. You're good to go. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. Oof, you know? And I man. asked him too. I was, he was like, man, I've never heard of anybody trying to run a scam around by installing care. sod. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's weird. weird. I, was, I was thinking, I was talking to Kayla about <clears> it, <throat> and it was like, uh, maybe he owns the, the actual property somehow and is trying to scam to get like free sod done to the property before he sells it. I think it it's a pretty standard check scam to where check scam I up. have money that I now owe them and then they would do something squirrely to where they'd eventually get their hands on my like bank and routing oh, number. Yeah, yeah. And then they'd probably just drain the account. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm assuming. But that's, yeah. that's just a wild way to do it, though. That's such an extreme way to do that. Yeah. Like, like, why waste whoa. so much of my time <laughs> and energy? <laughs> These things are getting yeah, bro. so. And could you imagine out if out I had like gone a and installed this care company, bro? Oh, God, like, had some random guy come out and be like, "What the f yeah. are you doing well, at my house?" Once <laughs> this happened, in- Grayson actually looked into it. That house is still on the fucking market. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, when we were selling our house in They just Asheville. sent us an address and we went and measured. I didn't, yeah. you know. Well, here you yeah. go. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, my That's God. Right. Like, I, I and got it's one. newly remodeled. That's why I was like, oh, somebody just remodeled this joint. Like, hell yeah. It's, so it's, it's clearly be somebody a, had yeah, bought upgrade, it. Upgrade, basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I got it. It was empty. Okay, so the house was. When yeah. we were selling our house, it was on the market. I had this random dude show up and start knocking. And I'm like, the fuck? What do you want? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and And he was a little bit like, similar to you, Grant, Mm -hmm. like he was providing a service. It was supposedly to paint our house. And I was like, dude, I own this. Never requested any of this information. No way. None of this stuff. He showed me tax and it's like, dude, I'm the owner. Yeah. I'm selling this place. Like you're getting scammed. And he was like, God, I knew this was too good to be true. Because yeah. he's like, when I pulled up and saw this house, I was like, yeah, this is going to be a good payday. And I'm like, I really hate to break your heart. But, yeah. 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 Not the case, my yeah. dude. Damn, that's it was. I felt bad for the dude, but I was like, that's yeah, crazy. I could see y'all installing sod and some guy come rolling up out of there. And like like the, the realtor that actually is <clears throat> trying yes, to sell it, pull up like, uh, the fuck is the going on here? What fuck are y'all doing? And then it's even more trouble for basketball. Y'all be careful, contractors out there, uh, freelancers. Be Everybody. careful about uh, the jobs that you get. Yeah, and I mean, especially if to. it's something that's a larger job um, that you know you maybe not do all the time, or it takes a lot of work and a lot of like money up front, whatever. And money for make supplies. sure you talk to them on the phone, yeah. you know, yeah. or yeah, talk with the them, shake least. their hand in yeah. person. Maybe now that mm-hmm. would be best. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the best route. Talk to them in person yeah. and shake yeah. their meet hands. Meet them at the sure. site. Yeah, yeah. pull up. Sure. Meet, yeah. Hey, how about you meet me there? <laughs> we, you can run it over to me. Run me the details while yes. we're there in person, so I can see it while you tell me the details. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's fucking wild, bro. Yeah. You always got some crazy ass story, dog. <laughs> 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 it's fucking well, but uh, yeah, I've been chilling, man. Sober October just began. Yep. Uh, if anybody's rocking with us, I'm doing it too. We out enough. here, doing I'm it, doing, doing it, it too. Sobertober, um, yeah, we vibing. <laughs> <laughs> Drewski's a no skill on that yeah, one. Yeah, fun with that. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, there you go. Um, on both yeah. sides, you're right, Drew. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, it's spooky season. 
And, you know, during spooky season, a lot of wild shit happens out here in this world. And, you know, he got a call when wild shit goes down. The Ghostbusters. That, but yeah, them and the ambulance. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, the no, no. It's the Boo Lance. The Boo Lance. The Boo Lance. The Boo. <laughs> All right. Or if it's going really it. sideways, it's the corpse mobile. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to be careful when the corner shows up. It, it does. Um, it does. But actually, you're done being careful if the corner shows up. But, um, yeah, that was an early segue because there's a song of the day, right? Uh, yeah, it's a little like tiny story. I was um, popped over to help uh, a buddy of mine track some drums the other day. I'm flying in blind to this whole thing. There's barely any drum parts for any of it all other than just like a couple of ideas that he had or that the producer had. And there was one super, super strong, like early, mid-70s Bowie. And it got me back into Bowie for mm-hmm. a couple of weeks, you know. So I decided Cha-cha. to do... Uh, Oh, look at me forgetting the name of the thing. So, uh, The Rise of Ziggy Stardust. The name of the thing. Mood, Moon Dream Daydream, or what is it? Moon Age Daydream is the Moon title Age of the song. Moon Age Daydream. Just fucking like the little, little drum breaks in those, uh, those pre choruses there. There you go. Gum, 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 gum. Go check that out. Get some Bowie in your, in your life to start your spooky yeah. season. You know what I mean? It's good vibes. It's a great song. Yeah. I always, I always like to throw on Thriller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one for the spooky season for sure. That video is iconic, by the way. It is. The thriller yes, video. True. Uh, for people that have not seen it, I'm sure they exist somewhere. Mm-hmm. There might um, be one or two people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably the people younger than us. Yeah, I would surreal. think so. Yeah. I would think so. But you'd be surprised, though. You would be surprised. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to uh, Santi's Hot Facts, man. Um, you know, the history of EMTs, the, the wild things that occurred to get to where we are today and how wild oh. it actually is out there in these streets. Yeah. So I figured we could just kind of do like a little loose talk on like the 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 prehistory of it, you know, because I mean, woof, it was like 400 BC in certain, you know, examples of people helping people. Mostly on a battlefield, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, emergency so, medical yeah. services in general yeah. has always been battlefield around. Like, like, yeah. like so medical soldier vibe situations. Yeah. 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 And there's stories of like in ancient Rome of like in the actual city, you know, somebody gets run over by a horse carriage or whatever the fuck. There's often some kind of service that, um, like, More hey, or less loosely existed to yeah. where they had like a stretcher and they could run them down to take them to this guy, the local knows. doctor, yeah. kind of a thing. You know? Bite this leather belt, yeah, and uh, get that cut off. Let's but uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, but yeah, I'm, gonna pretty much. Much. I'm gonna skip a shitload of stuff because that's we could really get bogged down in that. But it seems I like mean, the it most could be important, a three episode yeah, right. Situation. <laughs> the most important milestone <laughs> seemed to be in 1966. Uh, President Lyndon B. Johnson received the report of accidental death and disability, uh, the neglected disease of modern society, which identified accidental injuries as the leading cause of death in the first half of life's span. So anybody Mm -hmm. under 25, you know, they're dying by accident. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Fall, break something, somebody shoots them, whatever. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, the, re- the report revealed that in 1965 alone, vehicle accidents killed more Americans than were lost in the Korean War. Damn. Shouts out yeah. the land boats. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, were literally, they were literally, yeah, <clears throat> land yachts back then. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when evaluating prehistorical emergency care, the report ended, identified that if seriously wounded chances of survival would be better in the zone of combat than on the average city street. So like I was saying before all of this, that's the most time that there would be someone nearby with some kind of medical training. Right. Yeah. But if you're just in a regular city street, you're probably going to die. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, exactly. Like if it's critical, well, they're yeah, you not gotta, making it. Well, back then you got to run to the payphone. <laughs> yeah, find yeah. one, run to the payphone, yeah. then you know, know the streets you're on, and they got to get ready and come through traffic and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, additionally, the report identified a lack of regulation or standards for ambulance operations or provider training. There were some cities that had some semblance of EMS going on, but yeah. not anything nationally accredited or thought of or trained so accreditation actually didn't come until the 1980s i can tell you that for a fact um uh but we actually called it the golden hour so somebody's injured you have an hour to get them to er emergency medical care certain Mm -hmm. things more so than others heart attack stroke 
certain things like that, you had an hour window to get them there. Sure. Based off of what we knew of critical care. So let's say it's a stroke. You got an hour to get them the medication or procedure to remove or break up that blockage. Yeah. So the stroke can resolve through therapy and other yeah. methodologies. For sure. But yeah, it's you. there's a certain timeline you have to get to these people and have to get them to care. So it's, it is sure. actually really important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so um, that basically was all kind of a buildup to the 1980s that you're referring mm-hmm. to, right? Which... Um, by the time that they really started publishing a lot of stuff around like 1969, they just consider this document, the white pages that I referred to earlier, as just the birth of modern EMS. Ironically enough, I found another timeline where <laughs> guess where the first 911 call happened in our country? Alabama. Haleyville, Alabama, in 1968. I have a really weird guy. story of the reason why I know that. And this is going to be you were on this, this is gonna, joint. Yeah, this, is gonna, that. this is going to let you know something about me that you might not know. Well, yeah, you probably do if you've listened to this podcast. For sure. That's what I By this point, if you listen, you know we're but, all from Bama. So I'm sitting in front of the Tuscaloosa County Jail about to go in for my monthly checkup. And uh, I look over and there's a, a like a trailer, like a box trailer the pool behind a truck, you know, mm-hmm. um, that's one of the cops like moving their supplies thing. And it had first nine one one call in the United <laughs> States. And that's what I was like, I'm long shot in this one. I don't know if this is right. Uh, it's in Tuscaloosa, but, uh, yeah. That's hilarious. Bro. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. The, man, there's the little things, you know, that stick in your brain forever. Well, yeah. Bro. I can't remember yesterday, but I can remember <laughs> that fucking the first time, 911 right? calls in Alabama. Uh, that's crazy as hell. Damn. Uh, An even funnier cool. one, though, is in from a previous podcast, this is why this makes me laugh. Uh, 1865, there's a certain city and state that established its first civilian ambulance service. Mm-hmm. Guess where that was? Mm. Any guesses? I mean, yeah. Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go yeah. figure. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. That's why I love yeah, that. That's, that's amazing. That fucking River on Fire episode. I love that. Jesus fact. Christ. Yeah, oh, if anybody needs great. it, yeah. I was just yeah. about to say, if anybody needs to start the first <laughs> no. civilian ambulance service, it was it's definitely, them. definitely that place. <laughs> that was a funny episode. Which, oddly enough, is the first episode where we actually started picking up traction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. seriously. Yeah, yeah. It was. The Fire River. <laughs> river Fire City. <laughs> I mean... Now you can see why they needed to start the civilian service oh, so fast. Oh, no, without, a doubt, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> I thought I really thought that Cincy. was funny. Yeah. That's crazy as hell. Oh, Ohio. <laughs> Damn. Damn. So clearly a lot of people believe that more could be done uh, in the out-of-hospital setting, including advanced airway management, vascular access, and medication administration. This led to the creation and implementation of the emergency medical technician Paramedic, or EMTP, curriculum in the early 1970s with uh, pioneering work by Walt Sto- Stoy. Walt Stoy is a guy's name. Walt Stoy, huh? Uh-huh. And Nancy Caroline uh, and others in Pittsburgh. But prior to the declaration of this new title, several organizations had already begun training personnel in advanced procedures and medication administration, creating the nation's first paramedics. Look at that. The first EMTP. TP curriculum included 400 hours of class, lab, and clinical rotations in various hospital settings, followed by a 100-hour field internship. Ooh. As pre-hospital advanced life support, or ALS, care gained favor within the systems and communities, more paramedic programs sprouted up all around the country. Mm-hmm. By 1972... The expectation of advanced level care on the streets and the homes of Americans grew, fueled by the iconic TV show Emergency! Exclamation <laughs> point, oh, which yeah. is the most fucking American thing in the world. People are I like, wow, that's, that's kind of cool that they're like saving our lives, you know, while on the way to the hospital. Oh, man, I love this TV show. Let's make sure we have a lot of that. You know? yeah. <laughs> it was, so I do it like they do on TV. <laughs> I, I actually think right. it was propaganda to get more people oh, it had to, yeah. to do this service. I mean, it's the same with Law & Order. Oh, um, yeah. They did that whole thing to like proper, guy, proper 
Propagate. Propagate. Look at that. <laughs> like the goodness of cops and the work that they do to solve cases. And now they're oh, so far over the top as bullshit. But it started in the fact of like, you know, putting yeah. cops in a good light, especially in that time in the 90s when yes. shit was fucked up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the words it's still of George up, W. Bush, anyway. it's perpetuate. Yeah. Perpetuate. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, TV, TV definitely changes yeah. the landscape of America yeah. every, right. every fucking I mean, year, it, every it, decade. It set a standard expectation for the public and served as a catalyst for many to pursue careers in the EMS. So, you know, again, it really propagated the idea of that, right? Exactly. Jim's publisher, Jim Page, then an L.A. County battalion chief, served as a technical editor for the show and is credited with making the producer and the director portray paramedics as professional and well-educated. A solid step for future EMS educational endeavors. As interest grew, more and more people attended CPR, uh, EMT, and paramedic classes. Still, there were many unanswered questions about uh, like pre-hospital medicine. There wasn't much science to prove what treatment was effective in the emergency setting and other areas of medicine didn't provide much guidance. Initial paramedics didn't have experienced staff members to guide them and the emergency physician, as we know it today, didn't really exist. Well, I mean, all right, so EMS started in battlefield triage, basically. Right. ER physicians, the better ones that I've ever experienced in my time mm-hmm. in that field, they were actual, they came out of, you know, Iraq, Gulf War. Yeah, they saw active duty. They saw sure. active duty and were battlefield triage MASH doctors. Yeah. And so yeah. when they came back to the States, they established that mentality mm-hmm. to ER, ER medicine. And if you go to any level one trauma, most of those ER physicians were either trained or are. That level? That level. Yeah, They've yeah. had that experience. Mm. Yeah, and, yeah. And sure. you, But if you think about it, I mean- if you really think about it, like some of the most horrific stuff you're ever going to see come from a battlefield, but oh, yeah, in sure. like major metropolises where gang present is very active, drugs are more rampant now yeah, than yeah. ever. Yep. <clears throat> they're the only ones that really know how to try to think of the best way deal, to say deal this. With that shock and that like, well, it's not really so much the shock. It's you have to switch your brain into, I'm just going to say it the only way I know how to ABCs. Airway breathing circulation. Mm-hmm. What do I have to do to keep this person alive and nothing yeah. else? Like sure. right now, what sure. can I right do to keep now. them breathing? Yes. And then we can figure this shit out in a minute. Like, yes, absolutely. That's <laughs> yeah. the, that's where I was trying to go with it. It's like they're the only ones that have the brain mindset to where they wash everything out of the else out of the picture. Yeah. And they know how to treat triage yeah. and deal with yeah. it. Yeah. That's crazy. That's intense. Salute to all y'all that's out there. Yeah, Real. absolutely. You know. Legit got us through a fucking crazy year, actually. Right. Oof. <laughs> yeah. They were they were out there yeah, 95 I mean, hours a day I know. in 2020, bro. Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway. Like, they're st- it's still like I know a lot of people. Oh, it's still fucked. In yeah. the ER and stuff, and like they're they're still. Yeah, like, still going. They're still yeah. going. It's crazy. It the variants are getting it's not over. No, the variants <laughs> are getting better, but it's still like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. still. You get the dumbasses that don't want to take a vaccine for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. sure. It's, it's, it's out there. So, like a small variant, like these that we're experiencing now, like we've all had the vaccine at this table. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, okay. the, and all the boosters. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. all the boosters. So, like, we get the sniffles, and it's like, I can't smell today. Whereas the dumbasses in the ERs that. They're on ventilators, like they're yeah. mm-hmm. they're yeah. doing ECMO on them, which is yeah, man. Yeah. it's intense. Which is basically trying to keep their heart and brain from stopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's rough. Uh, so to kind of circle back around what you were saying earlier, uh, just you know, keep this thing trucking along. It went until 1972 that the first residency program to train physicians specifically for the practice of emergency medicine was established at the University of Cincinnati. Oh, look hmm. at that. Cincy coming back in here. <laughs> yeah. What did still, it do, Bearcats? <laughs> still advanced cardiac life support <laughs> didn't exist until 1979, and it wasn't universally required for paramedic training and certification until the mid-1980s. Oh. Yeah. Meaning care for patients in cardiac arrest varied wildly from provider to provider. Paramedics were taught by nurses and physicians who were interested in emergency medicine and had visions of what it could look like in an out-of-hospital setting. Many, however, had never worked in the sometimes harsh pre-hospital setting or in the back of a moving ambulance. And I have to assume we're not seeing active 
military battle either. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? They're they're doing it from like a okay. Um, this is how I do this it. This is how I do it in yeah. this room. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not on the this. sidewalk in an alleyway, right. like on a staircase. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yeah. So different. visionary pioneers of EMS and EMS education recognize the need to further the standardization and regulation suggested in the white paper. 1970, the first board of directors of what is now the National Registry of EMTs met to determine the feasibility of creating a national certifying exam. In 1971, Rocco V. Mirando was selected as the founding executive director of that exam in the same year, 1,520 personnel took the first NREMT ambulance exam. Look at that. Getting going. Seven years later, the exam was given in Minneapolis. The same year, became a that person became a member of the National Commission for Health Certifying Agencies. During this time frame, paramedic programs saw the need for validation through a national accreditation process. Mm-hmm. EMTP became an approved health occupation through the Council of Allied Health Education and Accreditation. What year was that? Uh, that was seven years later from 1971. So it was like 1978. In 1980, the University of California or UCLA and Eastern Kentucky University were the first institutions to have their programs reviewed. Oh, Other okay, forward you, thinking huh? uh, programs quickly followed. The reviewing in- entities are now the Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education Programs and the Committee on Accreditation of Educational Programs for the Emergency Medical Service Professions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I got this acronym. What about yeah. this acronym? Yeah. Yeah. What about this That's acronym so too? And then this longer acronym. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. It's all about helping people and shit. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. Medical has... The biggest book of acronyms. Oh, yeah. Like, it's Maggie, crazy. It, oh, yeah. Man, it, looking at this document in front of us is like, it. what the fuck? <clears throat> yeah. You can, you can slap down like a freaking Stack encyclopedia of right now and just be like, oh, oh yeah, just see AGP. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's fucking wild. Yeah. Now, it was updated in 1985 and then again in 1998. Uh, the 2000 EMS education agenda for the future. <laughs> a systems approach carried the vision of the 1996 agenda for the future, and 2009 saw the most recent changes in paramedic education in the form of educational standards. The education standards are less prescriptive than the original curriculum. This allows paramedics uh, or a paramedic education to change as the practice changes. So it kind of lets them keep a little ahead of the curve, I have to assume. So you're mm-hmm. not going through all these different review boards all the time. you know. Yeah, that's that's about when I started all my training and was yeah. an active EMT was in that time frame. And yeah, the, there are a couple of semesters where we had to go back and learn new stuff. Like yeah. It was, <laughs> oh, was yeah. kind of nuts. I but, mean, I mean, it's know, always progressing. It's always it, it, look, it's always going to change. It's yeah. always going to be better. Like, I mean... Mm-hmm. It's and the double edged sword of science. Yeah. Luckily, so for yes, us. Yes, exactly. it's a double edged yeah. sword. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Because it, it is going to make you more effective, but it's also annoying because it's like, oh, I've been practicing as a doctor or an EMT. Who cares? I've been doing it this way for this long. Decades. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, hey, go to this class. But I would know? much rather prefer <laughs> that it was that way than like Fuck set yeah. in stone and then 10 years down the road, I am the person in the back of an ambulance or no. something and it's different, you know? No. Yeah. yeah. It, it right. Ha- it, it has, has to, to change. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it's, it's, yeah. it's like uh, just, it's, I mean, yeah, that's just society and fucking general, I mean, bro, but, if we can get a new phone every year, we better get better medicine every fucking year, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. Yes. Fuck it. You know, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> definition of progress, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was around that same time that we actually got Narcan on the trucks and all the things. Mm. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, and so did police in the field. Yeah, like, yeah. Our home state I and mean, where I was Definitely. bouncing around. I mean, we... Before that, they were like, what's Narcan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, this ding dong is overdosing exactly. on this type he of He needs opiate. this like, real quick. Yeah. Hit him in the nose I yeah. mean, or hit him in the IV. Like, I mean, it's like starting IV, hit him with the Narcan. And it's like, it didn't yeah. work. Yep, that's definitely what they took. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Save, save Strap him down. They're swinging. Let's go. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, it's, it's just wild out there, bro. Yeah. It's wild in the streets. <laughs> when we get to the stories, I got some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So continuing to move uh, towards standardization and accountability, the NREMT has stated recently that only students who graduate from COAEMSP 
accredited paramedic hey. programs <laughs> are allowed to take the NREMTP exam. This yeah. change has forced programs across the country to evaluate their criteria and either seek accreditation, close their doors, or graduate or graduate students who aren't eligible to be nationally registered. I mean, like you should. Well, I totally agree with that, actually. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, private um, yeah, yeah. ambulance companies and yes. stuff like that. And you can, if you can slide something underneath the table to make it a little faster or cheaper, they're going to do it. You know what I mean? They're, like, de- they're definitely going to, private ambulance companies definitely cut a lot of corners. They yeah. definitely run their people into the ground. I worked for yeah, one for a for long sure. time. Um, so, I oh God, I lost count of years. I'm that was a while ago, but yeah, <laughs> it. So here's the deal with most of them, and I will say this: like it depends on your state. Mm-hmm. The most, regulations on the state, yes, yeah, yeah. whatever the state regulations are. Like Alabama, you had to pass the National EMT Board to be even considered, to be even considered, yeah. and to get your state license. Now, yeah, you did not have to keep your National EMT, but you had to keep up with your state license. Oh, I got you. So you can pass. That one yes. level, and then just keep that, and then just state keep your state keep rocking. level. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. if you let your national lapse, you had to redo your national test to go anywhere else in the country to get your state licenses. Oh, wow. So it really varies on state to state. Like I know, I'm trying to think of the states. Uh, we'll say one of the some of the more rural states: Montana, North yeah. Dakota, mm-hmm. I, I. Idaho, Idaho. <laughs> Idaho thank you. I was trying to think like Iowa. No, yeah. Idaho. Oh, well, mm-hmm. Iowa too. Rural you, as hell. You have to keep, like, your national. They will not accept anything else. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. For um, sure. But that's more based off of, like, what they can do in the fields. Mm-hmm. Right. Than what, like, r- more um, populated yeah. areas can do. For sure. I mean, they're they're also, like, a little more shorthanded just with population there. So you got to make sure they're certified. Well, I mean, like, you look, at, you, look at, um, you look at those states I mentioned, like, they, f- they fly a lot. Yeah. on fixed wing helicopters that have like large open bays in the back. And that's actually mm-hmm. how they get to most of their patients. Yeah, yeah. Um, longer transport times, they have to do more. Oh, yeah, sure. Like there's big variables in that. And then like you look at somewhere like here or Atlanta or Birmingham yeah. or mm-hmm. Cincinnati. I mean, we, we I can mean, go four hours and be in a different state. You drive four hours in Montana, you just to the next town. Yeah. You, you know, know what I mean? Next, like it's, exactly. it's that fucking right. big. It's fucking right. crazy. Exactly. So yeah. like the more populated areas and more metropolized they are like those EMTs don't do as much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they still provide a great, don't get me wrong. Like they still do a lot to save people, but like they don't do uh, tracheotomies. Like they don't, Mm -hmm. they don't do super advanced airways because there's other things you can do to just keep that person alive while you go 10 minutes to the hospital. Like like there's, there's different things. Yeah. Yeah. But you have someone doing like relatively advanced, uh, uh, you know, like emergency medical, um, surgeries, if you will. I mean, hell, it is a surgery. As in a, a fucking helicopter. Yeah, you know? they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Thousands of feet off the ground traveling yeah. as fast oh, yeah. as they my, can. My girlfriend, uh, <laughs> yeah. girlfriend Kayla, her mom is a, a ER nurse uh, up in Montana, and she right. has some wild stories about, oh, yeah. like, you know, people coming off the helipad, basically, like, limbs hanging out from motorcycle accidents or horse accidents or yeah. mm-hmm. tractor equipment and shit, bro. Like, it's... Yeah. It's an unforgiving country out there. <laughs> yeah. So speaking in the, on like, in the wilderness. Speaking on like the private, private EMS stuff, real quick. I actually talked to a group of uh, firefighters that came into work the other day, mm-hmm. and I was just like, just out of a you know general inquiry, what all does it take to get into what you're doing right now? You know, like they were like, okay, you got to get your EMT license and go to fire college. Yeah. So and <clears throat> again, but honestly, state to state, it's but that's different. but so us being in Tennessee, this will be that state thing. Yes. Um, the guy said to me, he goes, but honestly, if you're really, really hungry, a lot of these private EMT places right now don't need a certification and will just give you on the job paid training. Oh, fuck. Uh, no. And I was like, oh, fuck what? That. Fuck that's that. wild. It's crazy. But man. yeah, that's, he was that's just some like private that's, shit. It's like a, yeah. it's like a, um, they're just accepting people because they're such shorthanded right now. Probably oh, contracting yeah. people out. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're just trying to push people through to see what sticks, I guess. Oh, God. It's kind of fucked. You fucking hire a gun at MTs out here. Yeah. That's why. Well, I mean, now we're going back to the 70s when they would steal each other's patients out of the back. And that was a private thing. Oh, they yeah. would, I they think we're going to get into that at some point. They, they would straight. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like, I've heard stories. Yeah. <laughs> From people who did it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's crazy. You know, it's funny. I actually had a really hard time finding some of those, like, funnier stories because yeah. I don't think they really want 
people to know about them. No, like when they yeah. just show up and like but. fight over the body, <laughs> my body, and, <laughs> and the body just dies oh, they, in the street before they can get to the hospital because they're oh, fighting yeah. over the money. They flatten tires. They take the carburetor caps off the ambulance. Yeah. Like they do all kinds of wild yeah. shit. Just be like, here's well, a break line. <laughs> yours is busted. You're going to ride with uh, me now. A lot like, more glorified now. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah. Savage back then. <laughs> it was. It really was. Yeah. I did have some um, kind of funny little little anecdotes or kind of interesting anecdotes. Um, for example, New York City has private ambulance companies that respond to neighborhoods with specifically assigned EMTs who speak the language of the neighborhood. Hmm. So like the Midwood Ambulance in Brooklyn, uh, they can speak Cantonese. The Hatzola ambulance uh, can speak Hebrew. And the assistant ambulance, uh, assist ambulance speaks Russian. Oh, yeah. Because oh, if you got somebody freaking the fuck out and you have no idea what they're saying mm-hmm. or what's going on with them, it might yeah. be kind of nice to rough. know yeah. someone <laughs> flew in out there. Someone still this one? knows. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was actually going to, uh, that kind of reminded me of being downtown Birmingham you had plenty of people that only would speak Spanish, I have to assume. So how'd that go over? <laughs> I I personally did not have any of bad experiences with those. They understood you were there to help. Uh it did not help though that my uniform looked like a police officer uniform. So oh, yeah. that was fun. And so right. you're like, no, 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 me medical. Yeah. I help. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm Definitely. here to help you. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, but I did I did pick up this one patient. It was a welfare check. She was an older lady. Uh, Russia, Russian was her primary language where she was born and everything. She used to be a ballerina, ironically enough. Oh, wow. out. Yeah, it was cool. Had a dementia, I don't know what you want to call it, like sundowners effect or something, and sure. flipped out. So shit just went straight flipped, Russian, straight back to the motherland type flipped of? Flipped her shit in the back yeah. of that ambulance mm-hmm. and didn't know where she was. I mean, it was... She had dementia Oof. bad, uh, yeah. but no, was only speaking Russian. And I, uh, me and my EMT were just like, uh, 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 get medical <laughs> control because she's fixing to beat our ass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now, a little old 80 year old lady, yeah, they will whoop your ass. Oh, yeah. That's a lifetime of the strength, my dude. <laughs> yeah. And rage. Yeah, yeah. 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 Trust me. Straight up. They've been out here. left Russia yeah. as a ballerina to go to, to America. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> Yes, that's a rough, rough country. She's there. got all kinds of high kicks. Mm. Oh yeah, three <laughs> sixties <360s> too. <laughs> she, was, she was doing them too in the back of that she, truck. She on point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Here's uh, in June of 1969, the Miami Fire Department became the first fire department in the United States to successfully revive a lifeless patient. Patient in the field through defibrillation. Firefighters used radio transmissions of the EKG combined with verbal radio contact with the doctors at Jackson Memorial and the University of Miami to revive the authorization. I mean, receive the authorization. Yeah, medical directors. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, When New York City launched its first ambulance service in 1869, the horse-drawn vehicle sounded a gong to get folks to pull over. (laughs) (laughs) Its first aid bag contents included a stomach pump, bandages and sponges, handcuffs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. But a stomach pump? A stomach pump. Yep. Uh-huh. I want to know what that contraption looked like. It, yeah, was, right. probably, it, it was probably just like one of those... Um, Thing to get old gas out of a tank. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't I don't think a little siphon. Like just pump, 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 siphon. pump, Here we go. I don't even think <laughs> somebody it was stick that. This, somebody stick this down in his stomach. I'm going to blow real quick. Oh, <laughs> God. Bruh. Oh, uh, <laughs> cheeseburger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, rough. That's rough right there, boy. I would, the f- I'd actually like to see that contraption. I'm right, me too. I'm sure all the fucking... Uh bad liquor they were drinking and all the food they were fucked well, up. Right? Yeah, Stomach's I'm assuming that's what it was, there, yeah. All right, so, uh, like, I'll put it into perspective of why I'm really curious about it. Like, the first vacuum system actually used two jugs. <clears throat> One held, held water, the other mm-hmm. held air, and you would flip them in a certain orientation to provide the suction. suction. Yeah, 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 sure. We're talking about, Ooh. and that was in, like, the Korean War they were using that kind of mentality. So Man, I want to see what that... Yeah. Of 1869. That's I want to see what that contraption yeah, something. Like. I'm not lying. And you're in a horse-drawn carriage. Were yeah. they trying Jesus to use, like, Christ. a baffle? Like, you, what yeah. you would blow into yeah. your fireplace Fire, to, like, yeah. try to get the shit out? Like, Seriously. Like, come on. <laughs> Man, talk about the pain, too. There's no anesthesia out there. There's no pain relief. No, Drew just pulled it up. It actually looks like an old... It looks like a double barrel <laughs> siphon is what it looks like. Yeah, that is yeah. 
insane. You just pull the handle to get the suction to go. Yeah, yeah look off. at this thing. Yeah. Let me see that. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's yeah, like a fancy brass yeah. siphon. It, think, yeah. it, think, yeah. of, think about an air pump for a bicycle tire. Yeah. It looks yeah. like that. That's yeah. exactly what but it looks made like. out of brass. For your yeah. Russell basketball, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god! Made out of brass and steel. <laughs> now the and, other uh, contents of the bag that they had oh, oh surprises me less: uh, handcuffs, a straight jacket, and a quart of brandy. Oh yeah, for now, sure. That sounds like 1869 to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. Uh, yeah. Just lock, just lock them up. We're gonna drink this brandy on the way. <laughs> yeah. <pretty much. laughs> right. Do you know they were not giving uh, that to the patient? No, I'm no, fuck that. That, that like, was to deal with the fucking stress of being out there. I'm sure. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Stop bitching. Bink. <laughs> Pass me that bottle. Yeah. Take him to the ward. It's okay. Yeah, take it him wasn't to the empty ward. enough to break yet. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, a guy named Sidney uh, Yankower, I guess, invented the suction tip. Yeah, named Yankower. A- Yankower, okay. Uh, named after himself in 1907. In New York City, he invented uh, many medical devices, but is best known for this rigid suction catheter originally made of oh, steel God. or metal. Ooh, Did you fun. look it up? It was originally steel designed no, not yet. Oh, to help clear don't, the don't surgical wanna, field. I don't want to know about a suction catheter. During a tonsillectomy. Mm. However, it's, like, its use expanded to include pre-hospital uh, or for a, oh, man, you're going to tell me about that one. Uh, Oropharyngeal, ah, got it. Got it. In the late 1970s. Uh, mm. Woof. Yeah, right. Diving into the weeds now, Grant. Uh. <laughs> 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 uh, let's see. See, the term siren has its origins in Greek mythology, where it's referred to being a similar to, or to a being similar to a mermaid. Sirens mm. songs lured sailors to their shipwreck deaths. Mm-hmm. Hand cranked sirens first started appearing on ambulances in the mid 1920s. So it does the opposite effect of an actual siren. Yeah, I it's thought like, that was kind of funny. You're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Instead of like, the oh, way. sweet, what is that? They haunted my dreams for a while. I'm not gonna lie. You can yeah. imagine. It's, yeah. like, it's like a ticket machine. That's what I was kitchen. about to say. Yeah. Oh, this is real. Anyway, uh, this is a cool one. Uh, the first defibrillator designed for use in the field was developed by Dr. Frank uh, Belfast. Pantridge in Belfast, Northern oh, Ireland. Shit. He installed his first version in a Belfast ambulance in 1965. It weighed 150 pounds. <laughs> Shit, son. The battery, son. The and battery. operated it, yeah. from car batteries. I was, yeah. a, I was batteries. about to say Sign. earlier, there had to have been like some like trial and error bullshit to where it was just like, oh, man, defibrillate. Yeah, I got electricity. Hook up his car battery up to his nipples real quick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, again, oh, I think I killed him. That. Again, I'd be shocked if they did not come out of some war or yeah. Or yeah. some purpose, uh, mm-hmm. and they probably literally took the Jeep's battery yeah. and just to give some shock to him. Put a cable and like a switch, maybe in there somewhere mm-hmm. to break yeah. the current mm-hmm. if they needed to be like hit it, yeah, hit the button. Or you got that one unlucky guy that's got to just connect it. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> hope hope to God nobody else is touching the table. I'll tell you that. Oh man, Dude, who's gonna do? invent these rubber tables? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oof. Well, all OR, what we call a table in the medical industry, like it's, they were, they were literally metal crank tables. Like uh-huh. they're flat as shit, metal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be touching that thing. No. Trust me. Don't touch it. Thing hot. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought was kind of cool for us, uh, specifically because King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain. Oh, yeah, that was fucking The same monarchs who uh, sent Columbus over. Yeah, we They're don't. the ones that actually gave us the word ambulancia in the, late te- in the late 1400s. Interesting. These were the first recorded field hospitals consisting of special tents equipped with medical and rudimentary surgical equipment. Okay. Saws they, and hammers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they did something good, I guess. Saws, hammers, and chisels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, <laughs> pass me that kitchen knife real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Lift his head works. up. I got an ice pick. <laughs> Man. <laughs> How you feeling? <laughs> this is what I thought was kind of crazy. Widespread use of non-sterile gloves was not common in EMS until the early 1990s. And yeah, it was the spread, so. of, spread of the AIDS virus that uh, was the main... That prompted that one? Prompted yeah, that, that, that prompted a lot of shit. Actually. So prior to then... Yeah, probably. Um, yeah. Mask, everything. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Prior to then, BVMs and other equipment would be washed and reused while in the field. That's nasty. Mm. Yeah. That's Thinking rough. about that, like, uh, that's... that's woof. Yeah. 
Can't imagine that. That's just like a pair of work gloves Dude. in the yard, bro. Like, no, nah, dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and my organs, G. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? I'm going to need you to uh, clean them off. I think we all know ones. blood doesn't wash out very well. Yeah, no. Not at all. <laughs> all it <laughs> does <laughs> if you're hooked up to like a fire hydrant, because done that before. <laughs> so cold, Open the doors. Very cold water. Very cold water. <laughs> Open the back doors. Let's go. <laughs> oh, shit. A uh, mobile defibrillator was used to treat uh, Lyndon Johnson when he Look suffered a heart attack in Virginia in 1972. Oh, so, Lyndon B., huh? Good for him on signing off on the whole white paper thing. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Worked out in his favor. He didn't really? walk around with a tick for the rest of his life, yeah. though. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think he was all right. <laughs> oh, Lyndon B. <laughs> well, I don't think they understood the whole jewel principle at that point. Yeah, nah. That was around <laughs> the uh, highly used lobotomy. Well, yeah. it's, it was kind of dying down a little bit there then, but yeah. Yeah. After old Rose Kennedy. And then finally, for my little fun list here, the first practical traction splint was designed by a British orthopedic surgeon, Hugh Owen Thomas, in 1875. He came from a family of Welsh bone setters who passed down their secrets from father to son. Bone setters. Thomas's <laughs> nephew called it the Thomas leg splint or the Thomas half ring. And by 1918, it had helped reduce mortality in military femur fractures from 80% to about 7%. That's insane. I was and about to say, this Army. family that's had good, to have that's been good, just awesome. war medics. Can you imagine? Yes, that? Like, straight up, that's all they were. Yeah. Down. Nothing about that. Yeah. I like how, <laughs> like how their <laughs> occupation was bone setting. Yeah, bone setting. That's, that's some... Bro, that's that's like a metal band name. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> bone setters. We are bone setter. <laughs> <laughs> that's lit, bro. Yeah, that's lit. That very some very obscure like BDSM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could get there. Could get there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's Dark so many angles humor. to that. So many <laughs> angles to that. No pun intended. Dark Actually, humor. pun intended. The anyway. bone spelunkers. <laughs> No. Oh, my goodness. And I, I found a really cool little story <laughs> that uh, is <laughs> too long for us, but um, let's make a fun little tweener. It's about a group of um, African-Americans that were referred to as unemployables mm. that ended up starting up. They became like the first group of uh, EMTs in, I think it was Pittsburgh way yeah, back yeah. in the day. Pittsburgh in yeah. the 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. we'll do that another day, but yeah, it's, it's very cool. We yeah. can, we're going to run into that on a tweener. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I think we should finish up with some uh, some fun stories from the field from Lee. If he's got any Oof. off the top of his head, <laughs> how, how how dark you want to go? I mean, shit, you've heard our podcast. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we're talking about we're good the field. Yeah. So I mean, so. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, is this yeah. A, is this the last pos, po, last podcast on left gold star moment? I yeah. think that's what we got right. coming up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So I was at EMT, went through paramedic school and everything in Birmingham. Oh nine time frame. Yeah, I think I stopped being one in twelve. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Uh, worked for a private group, so I <laughs> we were used and abused by a lot of different people. Uh, Mm -hmm. Ironically enough, a lot of fire departments don't have their own ambulance because of regulation, legal uh, cost. They're very expensive to upkeep. So we ran with a lot of fire departments. Um, I got a handful I can (laughs) can tell. I'll tell the ones that stuck out the most. How about that? There you go. Uh, and we'll hit all spectrums for you. <laughs> so responded out to a very rural area. Uh, lady was having her third baby. It was like in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, had it in the back of my ambulance. I delivered a baby. That was oh, cool. fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was actually cool. That was wow. one of the highlight ones for me. I delivered a baby. That's crazy. Rural area. Uh, that was fun. That was, and they weren't lying in school when they said, uh, after that first and second, it's gonna come quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fast. Um, very uh, nasty, very uh, nasty though. Like childbirth is gross. It is. Um, just tell you right now, guys. And then Lee got to name it legally. No, <laughs> no, Lee did not. Oh, there's uh, there's more to this story. Because what baby was it? Lee, huh? <laughs> Lee did not. Because Lee did not speak the language. <laughs> so that was one of those fun ones. Oh, sure, where sure. Where the language barrier came into play. Yeah, uh, Lilito. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. but that was cool. Though. That was really cool. Got to deliver a baby. Uh, 
had one in Irondale. Actually, had several in Irondale. Mm -hmm. I could uh, imagine. Oh, yeah. Irondale had a lot of stories when I was assigned out there. Mm -hmm. um, guy had a heart attack on his front lawn. We actually brought him back to life. That was cool. Nice. Another one was a shooting. That guy did not survive. Mm -mm. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, we were literally holding... I was literally holding pressure on his chest to stop the bleeding and before trying to perform CPR at the same time. They cracked his chest in the ER. We got there within like a couple minutes. Uh, and unfortunately, his heart was just gone. The bullet ricocheted around and just uh, oh, sure, obliterated yeah. him. It was bad. Yeah. Jesus. Overdoses. A lot, a lot of overdoses. Yep. Uh, a lot of overdoses. One, there was a, what do you, what do you call it? What do you, what do you call those houses that are just like, Trap house? A halfway house? Ha no. Projects? No, it, it's like it's like a den, like a like a oh uh, a, uh, like a, what, dope, what? a dope den? Yeah, like a, like basically a, yeah. a dope den. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah, sure. Basically a dope den. Yeah. Um <laughs> this chick was staying with them. They didn't even know her name. They just like oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Found her. She yeah. was way gone. But and squatting like abandoned houses. Yeah, like a squat dope. house yeah, kind yeah. of situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was gone. Like mm. gone, gone, like Oof. It's like one of those like, shit. Do we start CPR on this chick or do we just mm -hmm. call, call it? it yeah. Call it taker. It was bad. Hated that one. Another one. <laughs> this one. Another did another one uh, in Irondale where we gave the dude he was breathing still gave him Narcan. That fucker came up swinging. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking like. <laughs> so Narcan works by. Certain opioids and certain drugs, it you give them Narcan, it only job it blocks and stops the receptor in your brain. Yeah. So it's immediate, immediate high stop. Like yeah. I mean, it's like if you hit a car, you with your car, you hit a wall at a mm -hmm. hundred miles an hour. It's yeah. dead stop. Right. That dude came up swinging. I'm so glad we had the police and SOs with us on that trip because <laughs> sure. that but, guy was. That's what I was saying earlier. It makes, it. It's not surprising at all that they had handcuffs and straight jackets. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. In yeah, the yeah. 1800s. Uh, this, one, this one was actually funny. Like, he came up swinging, the doors were still open, and I'm not stopping his ass. Yeah, right? Yeah. So Goodbye. Here, yeah. <laughs> out of my field. Out of my. That's not my problem now. And, You're live. Bye. And in, the, in the back of all ambulances. It's true. Like, Lee yeah, job. So. Straight up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not stopping that shit. Like, and I learned the hard way real fast. Like, in the back of an ambulance, you have the stretcher location. Mm -hmm. You have a little bench seat for like a family member to ride with you if you wanted or if you needed to be there or extra personnel whatever it may be and then you have like a jump seat a captain seat like right at their head to control their airway mm -hmm. i always stayed up at the captain chair yeah. Yeah, yeah like when i was back there i was like uh -uh, I, i'm not getting no i'm <laughs> up Cause, here because they're gonna see that door and go that way probably. exactly <laughs> exactly yeah, without a doubt <laughs> and uh, kicking the stretcher yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kicking the stretcher Whoa, <laughs> hitting anything on their way out like yeah. i'm hit not, the gas i'm kicking the stretcher yeah. <laughs> i'm not on that bench trust me yeah and so <laughs> he went we out got the, another call <laughs> <laughs> yeah he went out the back of that door clocked one so right out oh, like he hit damn. him so hard it clocked like so knocked him the fuck out yeah yeah shit <laughs> the rest of them, Irondale police and SO, other SO, like they scatter. This guy is gone into the dark. Just like at large. <laughs> by at large. Like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I looked, I looked at the other paramedic who was an older dude. He was like, you're the young one. You're dealing with all this shit. He's driving. And I was like, the fuck we do? And it's like, well. That patient's gone, not our problem. Let's take care of the SO that's definitely <laughs> unconscious right now. <laughs> <laughs> make sure he's good. Yeah. Make sure he's good. Yeah. It was wild. That's fucking crazy. Uh, was, don't fucking give him Narcan. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah <that laughs> was right? Jesus. Wild. That's fucking nuts, bro. Like, that was so crazy. Yeah, uh, don't give chase to that shit, bro. I, I was like, ain't my problem yeah, anymore. And that. I looked at him and he's like, yeah, we ain't touching that. Let them chase him. Yeah, no, yeah, that's their job at that point. Yeah, I know, that was, that was yeah. insane. It was one of those, like, did this really just happen? Like, yeah. that's some movie shit, bro. Basically, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, structure fires, I have mm. worked a lot with the fire department out there. Great guys. I, I do have to say, any first responder does not get paid enough. I will tell you that now. No, no, not at all. Uh, let's see. Shootings. I was about to say, you've been shot at. I've been shot at, yeah. Mm. Not, not fun. 
I can't even remember the name of that little place. It was out towards Bessemer. It's like it starts with a fair, Fairfield, Fairview, something like that. Anyway, mm, sounds familiar. So, sounds about rightish. Well, one Bessemer itself though is whew. yeah. Well, yeah, that shit is. This one was wild. Wi- this one was wild. Like yeah. they they had a beef with somebody. They shot him up. We get the call. We're there with the fire department, police, sheriffs. I mean, they blocked the street off. Like mm-hmm. it was. Yeah. Then they busted through the barricade and shot us up to keep us from saving their rival. I don't. Damn. Know. It was crazy. Jeez. That's, that's yeah. Some fucking wow. Talk about scattering. Yeah. That's some gangland shit for real. Yeah, it was yeah. nuts. That was a little crazy. Uh, had one crazy old curmudger shoot at us through a front door. I had a new EMT, like a mm-hmm. straight EMT, not a paramedic EMT. And she like walks up to the door and I'm like, like you don't, don't do step in front do- of the damn door. <laughs> Go to the side. Yeah. <laughs> like, you step on the side. And like, <laughs> I hear, sh- blam, like pellets hitting the door. And I was like, I just was gone. I'm like, and she's trying to grab the bag and shit. And I'm like, leave the fucking shit. <laughs> 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 we can get more of that shit. We, yeah, get, we like, can't get more of your chest back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus. Leave it. <laughs> I'm like hauling ass to the truck. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. After that call, after that call, anytime I went to like a couple of residents. Yeah. Well, no, there were calls. There are certain calls you get. It was like welfare check, person check, uh, any kind of mental check, any, anything that fell on those lines. Like I was like, is sh- SO in route? Is sheriff's officers in route? Cause mm-hmm. I yeah. know how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. No. They're going to wick the fuck out on me. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> we got one call in the brickyard and I got into a screaming cuss fight over the radio with the, uh, dispatcher. Oh shit. Cause if anybody knows where the brickyard is in Birmingham, that is not somewhere you want to go. Mm-hmm. No, like no, daylight, no. dark. No, you're, yeah, it's not big, safe place. Big, big money, cash money, no, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for real, for real. Yeah, yeah. I got a screaming cuss fight with her over that one. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, the craziest one that I actually was, God, I got a lot of them, dude. It's so bad. <laughs> one, though, that was actually really, really cool that turned out. So we got responded to a call late at night. This guy, we weren't really sure what we were walking into. And the fire department had just beat us there because mm-hmm. we were coming from another call. We got off of it. And we got the call, I think, is like massive blood loss. Uh, told us to respond, light siren. Like there's a code we got for responding that way. We got there right after the fire department. The guys are coming out the door white-faced. Like I'm like. Oh, shit are we walking into like a major crime scene? Like, yeah. I don't know what I'm walking into. And there's guys, fire department people. Like sick. You got them shook. So yeah, they're yeah. shook. That's bad. Mm. It's bad. Like, so, all right. So we get into the house. The guy is passed out in the floor. Like white is a sheet. There's blood fucking everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Holy shit. Bathroom down the hall, everywhere, blood everywhere. Fuck. And I'm like, what the fuck? Fuck happened here. Mm-hmm. It's got a pulse. I start two large IVs, get as much fluid in as I can. I got an ambulance in the truck with me, or not ambulance, uh, other fire personnel in the truck with me. They're paramedic. We're doing chest compressions. Like we get this guy up to Montclair and Trinity, right over, mm-hmm. right over uh, border of Irondale and Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. Get him in, tell him what's going on. He's got blood coming out of his mouth, everywhere. We're like, what the hell Jesus. is this? Like, what is going the fuck on? Yeah. Come to find out, he had a triple A surgery years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh God! The mesh graft bonded to his esophagus. He was bleeding oh. internally, and it was coming out of everywhere. Holy so your triple A is the main artery that runs down the trunk of you that feeds right, right. everything. Oh, your shit, yeah. Yeah. everything. The graft had meshed to his esophagus. They saved him. We saved that. Guy. Holy fuck! That was insane. Wow. That was wild. insane because wow. one, I was like, did his wife shoot him? Like, we didn't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we had no idea. Like, somebody, are we looking for somebody now? Yeah. This is too, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, she's That's in crazy. the kitchen talking to the police. Like, we didn't know what the hell. Like, That's we couldn't find wild. any injury wounds or anything like that. We didn't know. Like, po- the, we didn't know. Jesus. But that's what we came to find out after the fact. And we were like, what a one in a million it. fucking situation. Oh, oh my God. It was I mean, wild. But also, what a cleaning bill. Jesus Christ. Oh, no, That's dude. fucking wild. You there was no... <laughs> you got to move up out of that motherfucker, bro. Yes. There was Seriously. no cleaning that house, yeah. trust yeah, me. Yeah, let's go ahead and move Ooh. out of here, player. Jesus uh, Christ, bro. Get the pictures, and that's about oh, it. Oh, God. 
like that place was like a full gut well, paint. Like yeah, he didn't need like, like a you know transfusion before he actually got a surgery. A surgery. Yeah. 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 Well, know, I mean, I'm we sure didn't he, even, they gave him one. You we know, didn't but, even stop in the ER. We literally went straight to the OR. Yeah, straight uh, operating. Yeah, yeah, we went straight, straight to the operating room. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, we. Like yeah. they're cracking his like chest. This is serious. As like right he now, he was on the gurney. Like they're Ooh. they're cutting oh, wow. him on the, on the gurney. That's like yeah, wild. like the OR medis at the door. Like it was right. insane. Like that That's was the craziest wild, thing. Is well, that the the time that you used the fire hose to hose yes. out the inside of the yeah. ambulance? No, literally. Yeah. Like okay. yeah, That's, wow. <laughs> we 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 literally got yeah. back down to the truck. <laughs> Everywhere, me, <laughs> <Woof. laughs> <laughs> me, my the other EMT. Talk about need some time off after Jesus. Uh, that one, yeah. Um, me, the EMT, and then the firefighter literally got back downstairs to the ER, sat down in an empty room, and we just all kind of stared at each other for a minute, and we're like, "Did did what do we do? Did that happen?" <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "Shit." He was my other EMT was a senior at that he was more experienced, more years than me. And we're like, he's mm. like, Well, fuck boys, time to get back to work. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm still processing. Hold on. Bro. I'm, I'm still, still trying to like process this, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I need a beer and a sandwich. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So, like, but no, we literally like park parked the ambulance on the hill, opened the doors, <laughs> and straight up took the ER's hose yeah, and no. like hose that bitch in the gurney off. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it was, it was just like That's running down the streets with red. It was, it was crazy. Wow. Yeah. Couple right. of gnarly car wrecks had one where this dude hit a, was on a motorcycle. It was like my first day actually. Oh, well. <laughs> first day on the field. Damn. He hit a guardrail in a curve and slid across it on his butt. His ass was uh, gone. Oh, like, oh, just like oh, imagine. Oh, I'm showing these guys, but imagine just like right at your lower gone. back, yeah. down to just above your knee. Gone. Oh, gone. Just uh, uh, gone. Just that's, gone. That's a Halloween decoration. Crazy thing with that one though uh, is the guy uh, walked himself to uh, the ooh. cot, laid face down because we're like, yeah, you ooh. need to lay on your face, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. We put bandages, wet it, wet them, like, just try to keep it, like... Strongest case of adrenaline I've ever heard. I was oh, gonna say, that's insane. Yeah. Like, Holy fuck, He's bro. just in shock at that point. Yeah, oh, yeah. Major oh, yeah. shock. Yeah. Just like, uh, go, shock. body go, body go now. I don't know, body go. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what that, the was, <laughs> that was crazy. That's fucking Oof. wild, That one was son. really... That one was wild. I was like, first day, Damn. and it was like... <laughs> what? Where's your butt? You can lose your ass like that? Yeah, <laughs> I think my ass a half a mile away. But uh, yeah, I think your butts. I think your butts down the ravine with the motorcycle, bro. Like, I don't think they're putting that back on. Sorry. Yeah. Damn. Uh, yeah, he's not riding anymore either. I'm sure. One car wreck on four fifty nine, and this girl, I I cannot express to you how lucky she was. Mm-hmm. So four fifty nine, it takes that curve as you come down the hill from Liberty Park. Mm-hmm. And it was raining, and she was in like a little Nissan sports car, maybe a Z3 something. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 350 Z? Yeah, okay. slid across, went down that embankment, Ooh. through the fence, and a tree stopped her. Now, that pine tree went into the car across through the passenger door, straight across her lap, and exited. Did not touch her. Whoa, wow. wow. Holy shit. Did not make she did not have a scratch on her ass. In the arms of an <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like like Jesus girl, Christ. if this isn't a sign to change your life yeah. and do something right. different, I, I don't know what it. else is. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Was, Jesus took that wheel, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it was, God damn. It was like <laughs> fucking wild, bro. Jesus Christ. Like God. after they got Whoa. the tree, after the fire department got the tree cut, we're like, we I mean, we had everything down there because we're like this is gonna be bad Mm -hmm. yeah of course you're looking at it from the hill like yeah that's definitely a casualty bro oh this is like (laughs) impalement like i don't know what we're gonna be dealing Mm -hmm. with no straight up nope oof man i did the uh i did the uh fucking call center job for a minute like the person that emts call when they're taking somebody to the hospital whatever and the (laughs) just like the most outlandish shit i'll just call i got this paraplegic had been shot in the chest and I was thinking to myself, what the fuck can a paraplegic do to make you want to shoot them? 
Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? <laughs> this yeah. motherfucker had yeah. to have a mouth on him, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. damn, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. this motherfucker got shot. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do shit. He just no. there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, what the fuck? Talking through but, a straw hall. Yeah, I've, I've heard some crazy <sighs> shit, but that was one of the most wild. I'm sure that was a crazy scene to walk into. But Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah for them. But, yeah, that was a wild I'd job. I respond to a couple of suicides just to pronounce them, which I hated pronouncing. Sure, oh, yeah, of course. Sure. It was fucking awful. Yeah, that's right. Um, I did not, thankfully have to deal knocking on some wood here i did not have to deal with any kids thankfully outside mm. of i did deliver that baby but the baby and the mom yeah. were fine that was easy yeah. Yeah, yeah i did not i've heard horror stories of like drownings do y'all remember rick and bubba no mm-hmm. i knew the guy that responded when his house. little yeah, yeah i responded to the i worked with the guy that responded to this his son's drowning oh, and shit, he man. quit Ooh. yeah he oh, wow. quit yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That's he real, quit. That's got to be a tough thing to see, man. Yeah, he quit. Actually, be, ended up being an alcoholic because. of Oh that. yeah, of course. I mean, that's something that'll drive any man, crazy, any person crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, that's some wild ass stories. Uh, crazy meth lab. <laughs> crazy that one was interesting. Oh, hey, did it blow up? <laughs> yes. Aha! <laughs> 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 oh, end, end on a meth lab blowing up. That's perfect. <laughs> Perfect, Perfect for us Bama boys, right? <laughs> Did it blow up? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All yes. right. Well, yeah. end of episode. St- story finished. <laughs> Took out half that CD hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, shit. Um, yeah, man, it's been a wild, uh, wild episode, man. Um, history MTs and some crazy stories from Lee. Um, yeah, man. I didn't even scratch some, the some knowledge. Either. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're probably... Probably bring you back on for some more stories when we no, do story time. I'm good. Sure. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I'm good. I don't. I'm, I'm, you, I'm way past that. You trying try to just hold that? That's cool. I, I mean, there is a reason. There is a reason, like police, fire, EMS, yeah. OR, ER personnel are just twisted, dark sense of humor because yep. if yeah, you can't deal with it, seen. exactly, you can't find some way to laugh at it. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's no, actually, dark, dark uh, some of the funnier ones I have actually were when I was doing my rotations and I was at UAB downtown. Mm, sure. Downtown <laughs> Birmingham. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd actually come across an article when I was doing the research for this. It was, you know, basically, and there was like a little you know, news clip attached to it, kind of giving um, like first responders and people that have to work in like o, like ER and OR kind of a hard time about yep. them having a dark sense of humor, basically saying like, this is a, a job you should take very seriously and you know, shouldn't be so dark D- about it or whatever. And I was like, bull fucking shit. Bull I'm not going to give it yeah. two yeah. seconds bull on this shit. podcast because if you had to deal with something so horrible and dark every single day, you either develop a sense of humor about it, become a severe alcoholic and uh-huh. lose your job or yes. quit your job and go work at a flower shop yes. or something. Yeah, Man, right. like there's, no, you, you have those to. are the three options you got. Yeah. Look at Mr. Yeah. Rogers. Yeah. Yeah, it's a goddamn sniper. Now he's yeah. fucking, yeah. well, yeah. you be my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. I mean, look, I, I'm sorry. Like when, when you are in like, say the ER, for example, as a nurse, as a physician, and it's a trauma center or not even a trauma center, because even the little ones have to deal with some weird shit. Guy comes in that's been stabbed four or five times by his wife for whatever reason. And you make the joke. Guess he, guess Guess he shouldn't have mouthed off about how dinner was cooked. It's like that's funny. Like I'm so, like, <laughs> that's fucking funny. <laughs> but, yeah, that's just that person dealing with that trauma Ooh, because exactly. that was probably a fucking Tuesday for that poor guy. It was. You and know I what will I mean? tell like, you this <laughs> right now: full moons and Halloweens hated to be on those calls and shifts. Oh, yes. I bet they're wild. I bet they're wild. Yeah, what is that? And, they, Fuck, and they're coming. I hated those. They're coming. Something give somebody, about the moon. O, give, somebody give somebody ODing that dressed like a zombie some Narcan. They're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> or you respond. Wait, is that fake blood? Is that real blood? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or you respond to a call. I did not have this one, but I <laughs> knew the guy that did. And. <laughs> You respond to a call where somebody hit a telephone pole and they are dressed as a zombie or Mm -hmm. some sort of, I forget what he said they were dressed like, but they were like, they were dressed up and it's like. That's already already had trauma done to him, basically. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, the fuck is this? 
what? <laughs> do we call the corner? Do I call it like what? <laughs> Like doing like, one of these two you? finger lean ins and like do do I, do, do, do I touch do I touch like do I what's going on yeah yeah fucking wild. thank you yeah. Halloween that's yeah. what I say welcome to spooky season man yes I think this be a good one to yeah. kind of kick off uh, th- um, yeah it's October a good one. yeah spooky us, season you know? um, yeah. if you have Hulu Halloween is dope this year they have uh, scary. Very scary or very very scary levels to their Halloween oh, cute. this year. Yeah, so check that out. If My scary, scary consists movies. of Hotel Transylvania now with two kids. Oh yeah, true yeah. that, true that. Uh, <laughs> I went back for a classic uh, '90s noir detective film called Fallen by uh, Denzel Washington. Was in that? Yeah, movie. I've seen uh, Fallen. Yeah. It's gonna yeah, be good. I watched that the other night. I'm getting, I'm getting like, I'm easing into the darkness. Like uh, I'm getting slowly, slowly saw, scary. Yeah, or, yeah, slowly uh, scary. I can't just dive into what's you know one, hostel uh, or some shit. <laughs> I want to check out the new ones. Smile. Yeah, smile looks dope. That, smile looks dope. I actually, um, I just saw this one after midnight, it's called. Uh, we don't let it all hang Henry, yeah. fucking Henry Shabrowski is in it. Um, <laughs> what's what's the Rob Zombie? What's the Rob Zombie one with the clowns and the family? Like um, the, Devil Rejects? That's it. And then the sequel. Yeah, that's it. Another one. Doesn't they have another one? I like I, he did Rob the Zombie Halloween does a good remake. job. Yeah. With, I'm good. Uh, with, I'm good. I'm with, uh, well, Great. you know, I'm kind of Bro, a 28 days, 28 weeks. Great. Hunter, so I like all the Those total. are my favorite zombie um, movies, actually. Hey, Mandy, Nicolas Cage, Fire. Actually, cool. fire. Mm. yeah, um, and Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland is a trip. <laughs> um, yeah, there's some good ones out there, man. Um, oh man, yeah. uh, the horror is is is, is back, yeah. and it's still dope. Um, so, but yeah, man. I actually have a question for you guys before we end it. Mm-hmm. So, who at this table has had to deal with EMS first responders? I know you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you. Drew yeah, has I've had sure. like yeah. four skull concussions when I was yeah, a kid. Yeah, you definitely have. So, yeah. Yeah, you definitely have. <laughs> you definitely uh, yes, have. I definitely have had four skull concussions. <laughs> and yes, I definitely have. <laughs> yes, yes to all above. Besides. Except for one of them. My mom just threw me in my uncle's um, uh, 88 Camaro. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, when we got to the hospital, closed the door so fast. When they got back home, when I got back home a week and a half later, because I went into a coma for a few days. Um my sock was still hanging out of the passenger door, and he didn't even know it. And he was just driving around. Awesome. Oh yeah, turn up. But yeah, um, <laughs> that was neat. Yeah, so I had a uh, the handlebar of a three wheeler go in my face right here and come out right here. Damn. Mm-hmm. And that uh, they said they couldn't see my mouth or my eyes because no. my head swelled up so big. Swole. And they were running red lights in Northport and Tuscaloosa to get me to DCH. The other times it was Amber Lance. Mm-hmm. Get the Amber <laughs> Amber Lance. Yeah, man. Um, besides know. sharing a building with them when I was doing the yes. call center shit, yeah, besides I have, that, I have never had an experience in one. No. Wow! And that's only because um, you know, put some ice on it, mm-hmm. heat bag that shit, super glue that, uh, Robitussin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Go lay down for a few hours. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, Ele- elevate that for a minute. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're gonna live for about a week or two. You'll be fine. Stop going to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, hey, don't go to sleep now. Watch the cartoons. Damn it. Go to eat some cookies. Get some sugar in you. Eat some cookies. Here's some Windex. Eat some cookies. Some swear, yeah. eat some cookies. And watch this cartoon. You'll be all right in a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Straight awesome. up. Like, straight up. So, That's hilarious. Never, never did that. But um, they they do have a hella dark sense of humor because uh, <laughs> some of the shit I would hear just them on break coming back to the, to the fucking mm-hmm. station was like, yeah, what the fuck? Is you that? had to. What? Like I'm just listening to my music, chilling outside I on break. I still have a dark sense of humor Checking from my off. time doing it, and I, I mean, after that job, I was in the operating room a lot. Right. So I mean, still am with my job now. But yeah, yeah no. I'm you see, when you're around all the time, you, you got to get used to it. Like you say, you just alienate yourself from it in mm-hmm. a very unhealthy way. Yes. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, man. Crazy ass episode. I like this episode. It was dope. Cool. Yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, again, remember to uh, follow us. Give us that five star review. Tell your mama, your uncles, your cousins. Um, yeah. Happy spooky season is here. It's upon us. Um, the first kind of pseudo real one since 2020, honestly, to me, you know. Yeah. Sure. Kind of last year was kind of yeah. meh. Yeah. Meh. But yeah. anyway, uh, I'm Justin Hammonds and I'm saying love, love, life because it's worth living, y'all. And I'm Drew Shelnut, and I'm saying stay informed and make a difference. I will also throw a side note. This is a little uh, little thing I came up with, with in the shower. It may sound really stupid. That, my dark sense of humor is taking over. But <laughs> that life is like a pig's life. Oh god! To understand the other ones, you got to walk through the same shit. Yeah, <laughs> I can like it. I kind of nice. like it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Nice. You know. 
Nice. Coming from an Alabama boy, I guess yeah. that's par for the fucking course. Walking walk, walk through some shit. Yeah. Oh man, just get on and just walk through that shit. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, Grant Bramlett here. Uh, I'll skip the never liked you part. Just go straight to if you ever uh, were a first responder, somebody that has actively tried to save lives on battlefields, uh, has had to be awake for hours upon hours upon hours. The longest with, streak was forty eight. Yeah. 48 hours fucking watching, screaming, bleeding people, you know, and doing absolutely everything you can. Or one of my favorite examples that I've always used for Lee is when that massive tornado came through. Oh, oh man. Yeah. We got it in touch with each other on cell phones for maybe Second? two minutes. Nice. Maybe. It wasn't even that. It wasn't even that, dude. It was Motherfucker like, picked good? up you his. Good? Yeah. And he said, Yeah, I'm going uh, to the hospital now. So his truck was a block and a half over upside down. Fucked. Mm -hmm. He picks up his bag and just walked to the hospital because okay. he knew that they were going to need him. Like a of boss. Course. So Definitely. every single person <clears throat> like that, I always loved you. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you very much for everything you've done and continue to do. Cha cha. And I'm uh, Lee Bramlett. This was fun as always. I love doing these. And I will add this tag. Please, please, please be respectful if you have to call a first responder to help you. And if... You're in a tragic accident. Mm -hmm. Don't be a jackass. No. Yeah. No. Just please be kind to the it first responders. It sucks for everybody yeah. in the room, man. Yeah. yeah. Like. They're not paid enough <laughs> and they have to deal with way too much bullshit. Yeah. So please be kind to your first responders. They're yeah, here like to that. help you. Most definitely. Very cool. Yeah, man. Y'all uh, y'all stay up out there. Stay beautiful. Um, you know, keep doing what you're doing, pursuing your goals. Trying to thrive, stay alive. Season five. Hey, hey. <laughs> it was something I was getting into there. Um, tried to like try to balance the deepness everybody got into there. Uh, but we love y'all, man. Um, yeah, this has been a podcast called Friends, Facts, and Fiction, and we out. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for the next installment. Find us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all things Friends, Facts, and Fiction. Our Instagram handle is friends underscore facts underscore fiction. As always, please reach out to us. You can send any of your questions, praise, and fact checking to friends period facts period fiction at gmail.com. It's important to us to only propagate the truth, and we'll correct any errors we may have made. Your hosts and researchers are Justin Hammonds, Grant Bramlett, and Drew Shelnut. Our episodes are produced by Grant Bramlett. Additional producership provided by Grace Higgs. Our recording engineer is Grant Bram. Our editor, mix, and mastering audio engineer is Jeremy Mulder. Lighting design is provided by Justin Hammond. This has been a production of Friends, Facts, and Fiction. It's star stuff. Get it fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called here. Oh Get your God. facts right, player. Oh. That's hilarious. Oh.